I'd like to introduce you to the very beautiful, colorful, precise, and geometric work of Ed Emberley. He has a book called Picture Pie, and in it, he shows many examples of how you can create beautiful geometric art as well. This book shows how a circle, divided like a pie, can be used to make pictures of all kinds of things. These four simple basic shapes can be put back together to make a set of other more complex shapes. There are lots more shapes in the back of the book. Hundreds of different designs. The dots below the pictures here show the number and color of circles used. Frames, borders, and other repeat patterns. as well as a number of birds and other things. Here's how. And there's more instruction in the back of the book. You can always pause this video where you like to take a longer look. One, the picture pie pictures in this book can be recreated just for the fun of it as sort of a game or puzzle. Two, used as is for work of your own. Three, embellished or modified as you wish or in cut paper for signs, posters, and more. Four, used as a general guide to make something entirely different. In cut wood for toys, in cut metal for jewelry, or in cut cloth for needlework. A few hints for making something entirely different. You can add other materials, other divisions, other shapes, and other circles. It is possible to show only a few of the many things that can be made using picture pie parts. Much has been left for you to explore, discover, and take pleasure in. To get started making picture pie pictures, you will need five things. One, colored paper. Two, something to cut with. Three, something to stick it down with. Four, something to make dots and lines with. And five, something to make circles with. You can use a compass or you can draw around a cup, a can, or some other round object. You will also have to know how to make these four basic picture pie shapes. Start, fold in half, crease, unfold, and cut along the crease. All the pictures in the first part of the book were made using these four basic shapes. You'll be able to figure out how to make many just by looking at them. These diagrams will help you figure out how the rest were made. And you can pause the video whenever you see something you would like to try and make. So many species of birds you can pick. and insects. Oh, so many fish. The plants and the trees. other animals. Even a clown. Here I have paper and round things I can trace with a pencil. I position my cup so that I'm going to use as much paper as possible. Good right tracing means corner. possibly tracing from two different angles. Or you may have a printout from a teacher that already has some cool shapes on it.
This is a rough cut that I'm doing just to get the shape away from the big chunky paper and it'll make it easier to cut. I hold with my non-dominant hand and rotate it so that I can slowly close my scissors and cut out my circle. Maybe you have some really cool painted paper or gift wrap that you'd like to use for this project. Turn it around to the back to trace your circle. Once you've taken your time and cut out your circle, you should take your time to slowly bring the edges together and then pull out away from the edges to crease your paper. I can pinch to crease and I can lay it down and push it with my fingernail or another object to crease. I cut it in half and then I folded my halves in half to create quarters. I'm gonna cut very slowly and precisely on those folds. Here's a thick piece of paper because it's so thick, I'm gonna use my finger to slowly pull it into a U. I line the edges with precision and I work very slowly to draw a line in the fold so that I can cut precisely on that line and cut that beautiful paper in half. I really like that fish and I can see from the picture it uses one, two, three quarter circles and one, two, three, four, five, six quarter circles of another color. When you're using your cutouts, make sure you put the pencil side down. You want the beautiful non-marked side to be showing. Before I do any gluing, I'm going to try the arrangement out. So I have the picture that I'm looking at and I'm just playing with the pieces. It's pretty fun. You might need to rotate them, and you might need to double check that you have the right sizes. You will get more familiar with what looks like a quarter piece of pie and what looks like an eighth piece of pie, and so on. I'm even having fun experimenting with different kinds of paper and how it looks. Your gluing is very important for this project. You just want to use a small amount of glue on the back of these tiny paper pieces, but you want it to be spread nice and thin all over the entire back. I'm using my finger, and then I'm going to need to patiently press each piece into place until it really binds to the background paper. With thick paper, you need even better adhesion. So you need to make sure that glue is slathered all over and then really press it down for even longer. When you are finished gluing all of your pieces, try and clean up any wet glue that is sticking out and then sneak some glue or glue stick under those edges, under those corners. Glue stick works great for this project, as well as white Elmer's glue. I'm making sure no pieces are lifting up and away from the paper. And then I can even place a dictionary right on top for it to dry. Once everything is dry, you can go back and add any details you want. I'm using pencil first. And then I'm going to add on some pen for my little frowny fish face. Have fun making your picture pie design. It can be anything you want. <laughs>